Since its beginnings in the early 90s, Monster Jam has been known for its many tours that have traveled across the country, and some across the world. I would argue the most prominent and most well-known tour is the Thunder National series, which deserves its own video in of itself. However, the Path of Destruction tour, while not necessarily being the most well-known tour, and certainly not the longest running, to me is a somewhat overlooked relic that truly showcased some of the best Monster Jam has had to offer. And today, we are going to cover the intriguing history of this tour. This is the story of the Path of Destruction tour. So first, let's talk geography. Immediately moving on from that bizarre one-liner, all of the events that have taken place on this tour are located on the northeast of the United States, with the real only exceptions being Tennessee and I guess Missouri. More on those later. Now at this point you're probably wondering why on earth is this at all relevant to monster trucks? Well actually it's incredibly relevant because it's all about marketing. Monster Jam's busiest time of the year is undoubtedly winter, and when you look at the most recent years of Monster Jam, it's commonplace to have multiple weekends run up to five different tours all in different locations across the country. These northeastern states aren't exactly known for prime weather conditions during the winter, and if there is an event in the winter, it is always indoors. This means that the stadium locations in these areas aren't given as much love as the usuals that we've come to expect on Monster Jam's calendar. The Path of Destruction tour would soon change that, hosting events in the summer at these aforementioned new stadiums and tapping into what originally was an untouched market. Monster Jam would soon test the waters for the next two years, starting in 2010, which leads us into the progression of the tour itself. In 2010, there were two events as part of this test that I've dubbed these a part of. The first was Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Lincoln Financial Field, and the other was Cincinnati, Ohio at Paul Brown Stadium. Both lineups showcased a strong 12-truck lineup filled with mostly company-owned or Feld-owned trucks and some strong independents. In addition to that, both events were showcased on TV, which probably helped stir up even more interest for the eventual beginnings of the tour. Attendance for Philly was a sign for the future success in that city, while Cincinnati wasn't bad by any means, but definitely not as packed as Philly. Both events would go on to have great highlights, especially from Philadelphia, with insane crashes, great freestyles, and crazy saves alike. 2011 was the second part of Testing the Waters, returning to Philadelphia and Cincinnati, and also making a debut in another new venue, that being M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. Both of the returning cities hosted 12 truck lineups that were again pretty stacked with company-owned trucks and high-performing independent talent. However, Baltimore was a sign for bigger and better things to come. The lineup in Baltimore featured an additional four trucks, with even bigger names added, creating what was essentially a regular stadium event with a World Finals caliber lineup. Philly and Baltimore were showcased on Speed TV, however, Cincinnati was not. An unlikely reason for this may have been due to the lackluster attendance, which Philly and especially Baltimore were not lacking in attendance. The action was significantly ramped up, with both of the televised events producing unreal moments that to this day, fans cannot get enough of. It was clear that Monster Jam had tapped into this new and thriving market, and thus came the full inception of the tour a year later. Across the month of June, three events would host the inaugural events for the Path of Destruction tour. Cincinnati had since lost its spot to the newly added East Rutherford, New Jersey at MetLife Stadium, 
and the returning stops in Philadelphia and Baltimore. In an attempt to draw in even more fans, not only were all three events televised, but they made the tour stand out from any regular event or even any other tour on Monster Jam's calendar. The lineup solely included company-owned trucks and showcased the very best of what Monster Jam has had to offer. The tracks were also incredibly insane, easily some of the most treacherous and creative, especially at East Rutherford. The action that occurred was unmatched to anything we had seen prior. East Rutherford is important to note with this as well, because in addition to the 16 truck field, they also had a 2 truck encore with Inferno and the FDNY truck commemorating the fire department of New York, along with the first attempt of the double backflip. In 2013, the tour returned once again, however with only two stops on the tour. Those two were East Rutherford and Baltimore with Philadelphia being dropped for unknown reasons. Unfortunately, none of the 2013 events were part of the 2013 Speed TV season or the newly appointed 2014 Fox Sports 1 season. Despite this, the tour still had great attendance and memorable moments, none more so than this amazing save from Tom Mentz at Baltimore. The field was still incredibly strong, and I would even argue even stronger, with Ryan Anderson finally being added, as he was out with an injury for the 2012 tour, along with the new trucks, El Diablo, Scooby-Doo, and Zombie. That year's tour also featured some surprises too that were commonplace for the Path of Destruction tour, those being a double backflip encore for East Rutherford once again, and the For the People of Baltimore truck, commemorating the city and the fans with a truck that would perform sky wheelies in between rounds of racing, along with competing in freestyle. In addition to that as well, Iron Man ran the Mark 42 design to promote the third Iron Man film for the entire tour. The entire 2014 season was given the appropriate tagline as big as it gets and the Path of Destruction tour reflected that. Despite still remaining as only two cities, the tour had many, many other things that made the 2014 Path of Destruction tour one of the most iconic years of the tour. Baltimore was dropped, with Foxborough, Massachusetts at Gillette Stadium being favored instead, while East Rutherford, New Jersey remained on the schedule. Up until this point, all tracks on the Path of Destruction tour were the Chicago style, as it had become commonplace in Monster Jam recently. However, the tour introduced an all new racing style that would inspire future tracks down the road. That style was the appropriately named Jersey style, which debuted in East Rutherford in 2014. The track was similar to J-Hook and or St. Louis style, However, the key difference was they started up on a ramp located down the end of the track and then would race out into regular St. Louis style. The start was also marked with the first appearances of the infamous inflatable starting gates, which certainly wouldn't cause issues down the line. Regardless, the new and exciting racing style wasn't all that was planned. East Rutherford had a staggering 18 truck field along with an appearance from Doomsday and while Foxborough only had 16 trucks, it was still the same incredibly strong lineup minus Frank Krimmel in Fox Sports 1 and Alex Blackwell in Captain's Curse. In their places would be Charlie Porkin debuting the all new Dragon Monster truck which didn't compete but did do an encore and once again featured Doomsday. Like the previous years before, the action on the tour was unmatched, especially from East Rutherford, with many, 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 many moments that are must-see from any diehard fans. Foxborough did feature some great moments as well, but in my opinion, it was not nearly as many as East Rutherford. 
despite not originally being broadcasted to TV, both were part of the 2015 Path of Destruction preview episode that premiered the following year before the beginnings of that year's tour. 2015 managed to be even bigger than 2014, so much so that they should have kept the tagline from last year just for this tour alone. What started out as a 16 truck field grew to 18 last year, and for East Rutherford in 2015, we had an unfathomable and amazing 20 truck lineup. And at that point, you might as well just make it a world finals. With that in mind, it was clearly so ambitious that for the first time since the test events back in 2010 and 2011, independents would compete on the tour, with Stonecrusher and Hooked taking part, although Hooked ran as Doomsday for both shows, and Team Raisin Kane with Ice Cream Man and Exterminator would only participate in East Rutherford. But the madness didn't stop there. Both events were filmed and broadcasted to FS1 that same year, and both events featured two groundbreaking stunts. East Rutherford, who has exclusively witnessed the double backflip, would be the first to watch the world's first monster truck front flip, and Foxboro would see the fourth double backflip attempt, and hopefully the first to land cleanly. Once again, the tour was a smashing success, with great attendance, great moments, two successful stunts, and overall two fantastic shows. 2016 is what I would like to refer to as the beginning of the end. The tour's branding and name had been dropped, however the tour itself was still there in theory. East Rutherford had been moved to April, effectively meaning it was not a part of this series. However, it was still a great success and once again featured a staggering 20 truck field. The two stops that were part of the Path of Destruction tour were Foxboro and the newly added Nashville, Tennessee at Nissan Stadium. The lineup for these shows was still pretty stacked, considering it was only a 16 truck field but featured many firsts like the new Gas Monkey Garage truck, Leo Donnell in the BP Racing Fuels Mad Scientist, and most notably Gary Porter in Carolina Crusher. The events were also broadcasted to TV, and some great moments came from these events as well. 2017 was more of what we saw in 2016. However, the independents were mixed in once again with the felled trucks. East Rutherford rejoined the tour, making it a three-stop tour that had not been seen since 2012. Despite being utilized throughout the year for many 2017 stadium events, the iconic jersey style that debuted on this tour was ditched in favor for the return of Chicago style racing after fans wanted to see more of it. The lineups remained to be pretty exciting with the competition debut of the all new Wonder Woman monster truck and East Rutherford featuring the return of Tom Mentz who was up until that point taking time off after suffering an injury that took him out of competition. Foxborough saw the debut of the then New England Patriots tight end player, Rob Gronkowski, get to see his name on the side of a monster truck. With the help of Monster Energy and Team Raisin Kane, they unveiled to Gronk the all-new Monster Energy Gronk monster truck, also helping promote the Gronk flavor monster energy beverage that was promoted around that time. For the events, it was run on Raisin Cane and driven by Buddy Tompkins, in which the truck performed very well and actually finished second in freestyle behind the freestyle winner, Ryan Anderson, in Son of a Digger. The event in Foxborough and subsequent events on the Path of Destruction Tour featured the inclusion of the all-new two-wheel skills competition. 2018's tour was both kind of forgettable and somewhat confusing. Philadelphia returned for the first time in over six years. However, it was held in May along with East Rutherford. East Rutherford was notable mostly for being an absolute mudfest, showcasing why an event during that time may not have been the best idea. 
Foxborough and Nashville were held in June, and to be honest, the lineups were what we have come to expect. However, the lineups between events were mostly different. Up until that point, each event on the tour roughly had the same trucks, with maybe a few extras or driver changes. However, this year, there are a lot more smaller differences. Philadelphia featured Team Overboard, Ryan Disharoon in Saigon Shaker, and Steven Thompson in Hurricane Force, while East Rutherford featured Brutus and Rage instead of Saigon Shaker and Hurricane Force. Meanwhile, Foxborough featured Saigon Shaker, Hooked, Stonecrusher, and Jester, while Nashville had Justin Sipes and Megalodon replace Lee O'Donnell in The Mad Scientist, and the all-new Brodozer truck with Heavy D made its debut replacing Colt Stevens in Zombie, who was the temporary replacement for Brodozer in the first place. In all honesty, other than a few moments, the tour was quite forgettable, especially at East Rutherford. And the key features that made the tour what it was not being there kind of made it feel like the tour wasn't really there in spirit. The highlight of the tour was easily the debut of Brodozer, which went well. Ooh, this for some time, big air. Brodozer is on fire right now. That looks like some Max D Tom Vince. What hey. the f was that? What the hell is even that? Please, shut him off. 2019, in my eyes, marked the end of the Path of Destruction tour. My reasoning for this is much of what I've echoed from 2018. Philadelphia was included in the point season for Stadium Series 2, effectively meaning that it really wasn't a part of the Path of Destruction tour. And the other four events, including the new stop in Kansas City, Missouri at Arrowhead Stadium, had two completely different lineups that were essentially the 2019 points tours, only slightly different. Thankfully, both were more stacked than the regular lineups seen earlier in the year. While it was more practical, especially since Foxborough and Kansas City were held on the same weekend, it did feel somewhat strange. 2020 looked to have been the biggest year yet with the newly added Landover Maryland at FedEx Field starting off the tour before returning to East Rutherford, Foxborough, Nashville, and ending it all in Kansas City. All of the events would have taken place in the month of June, however they were unfortunately cancelled due to the pandemic. These shows would have seen the anticipated debut of Chris Kohler in Axe, along with the return of Joe Sylvester in Bad Habit Relapse. The event lineups for the most part are lost as the Wayback Machine has not archived these events. 2021 was a return to regular Monster Jam, including the northeast of the United States. Kansas City, East Rutherford and Foxborough would all have events, though they weren't terribly exciting. Added to the fact that Kansas City's first event was an absolute mud fest and East Rutherford had to get moved to the following day, due to unexpected weather, they weren't the most memorable years for those cities. 2022 returned to all of the previously listed cities and venues, including making their debut in Landover, Maryland at FedEx Field. East Rutherford and Philadelphia were part of the point season for the two different stadium tours, while Kansas City, Foxborough, Nashville and Landover were all around June or July of that year. Cleveland, Ohio was also added to the schedule and was hosted around the same time. 2023 is probably the most bizarre out of any of the years we've mentioned thus far. Almost all of the cities that we've mentioned were part of the Point series, including Foxborough and Kansas City, which have never been part of the main season. Though this is due to the World Finals being hosted much later in the year than it ever has been. Speaking of which, Nissan Stadium in Nashville has been named as the host for Monster Jam World Finals 22 for this year, which is an extremely exciting prospect. The impact of the Path of Destruction tour on Monster Jam at first may seem not that big at first, but in my opinion, it's had a huge effect on the future of Monster Jam's expansion. The 2010s may have started to phase out the qualities that diehard fans have really come to enjoy, 
However, they have helped expand the reach of the live shows across the United States and now even globally. It may be entirely likely that without the Path of Destruction tour, these events may not have ever been planned or not set as prime locations for Monster Jam. The general interest in the Northeast for Monster Jam is huge. Monster Jam is holding their most prestigious and important event in Nashville, along with the most recent Foxborough event, setting the attendance record in Gillette Stadium for the largest crowd for a Monster Jam event in their stadium. To get that kind of attendance anywhere, in any other place, to me shows that this tour has helped kickstart a bright future for Monster Jam in that market. And it's all thanks to a quirky little tour running in June and a little bit of July, showcasing some of the best and most exciting action Monster Jam has had to offer in these new locations. And well, that is all we have for you today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon with some more Monster Truck content.